interpreting standard and vertex form. First, we want to consider the type of quadratic function that allows us to identify the maximum and minimum value and how we use the equation to do this. Both vertex form and standard form will tell us if we have a maximum or minimum value. However, it's only vertex form that tells us what this value is and when it occurs. So if we consider the equation f at x is a times x minus h squared plus k, if a is positive, we know we have a minimum value, the function opens up, and the minimum value is k, right here, this number on the end, and it occurs when x is equal to h. For example, in the equation f at x is 3 times x plus 2 squared minus 4, there's a minimum value of negative 4, and it happens when x equals negative 2. However, if a is negative, the function has a maximum value because it opens up. So if I consider a similar equation, the difference being the a value is negative, the maximum value is negative 4, and it occurs when x is negative 2. Now, how does that help us? We're going to see a lot of word problems over the entire course, really, and we need to know how to interpret them. Okay, we're going to focus strictly on quadratics for the next little while, but we can have a common strategy for everything we do. And we've got our little rocket ship here with a 3, 2, 1 blast off. So step three is reading the problem. Then we're going to read and highlight the key information, then underline what we're solving for in the unit. We're going to choose an appropriate tool next to solve the problem or to model the problem. And then we're going to apply our knowledge, showing all our steps and then think about whether or not our answer makes sense. So if we consider this first example, the path of a baseball can be modeled by the function h at d is negative 0.004 d squared plus 0.14 d plus 2, or h at d is negative 0.004 times d minus 17.5 squared plus 3.2 d5, where d is the horizontal distance of the ball from the player in meters, and h at d is the height of the ball in meters. Part A asks, what is the maximum height reached by the ball? Part B asks, what is the horizontal distance of the ball from the player when it reaches its maximum height? Part C wants to know what the height of the ball is when it leaves the player's hand. And Part D wants us to describe the path of the ball and use the equation or equations to justify our description. Now, the first thing we have to remember is when we're doing this, the first step was to read our problem. So we read the problem already, but now we need to highlight key information. As far as highlighting key information, obviously our equations are important. What do the variables represent? D is the horizontal distance of the ball, and it's in meters. We're going to highlight our units. H and D is the height, and it's also in meters. Part A wants maximum height, that's important. B wants the horizontal distance when it reaches its maximum height. Not very good at drawing a straight line, but that's okay. Part C wants the height of the ball when it leaves the player's hand. And part D wants us to describe the path of the ball and to use the equation to justify our description. Now, that's step two, we've highlighted. Step three wants us to read it all again and underline what we're looking for. So the path of a baseball can be modeled by the function h at d is negative 0.04, blah, 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 or h at d in vertex form. d is the horizontal distance, h is the height of the ball in meters. Oh, we're going to underline our units so we make sure we answer everything correctly. Part A wants us to find the maximum height of the ball. Part B wants the horizontal distance of the ball when it reaches its maximum height. Part C wants the height of the ball when it leaves the player's hand. And part B wants me to describe the path of the ball and use the equations to model it. Okay. So in part A, the maximum height reached by the ball. We've highlighted, we've underlined. Next step is think about the tool we're going to use. If I want a maximum and I see a quadratic, a maximum occurs at the vertex. So, of course, I want to use this vertex equation. Now, where does the maximum height happen? It happens at the k value of the vertex which in this case is 3.225. So now I can, I've chosen my form. Let's make sure I'm right here. Do I want vertex form? 
most definitely. Standard form is just going dis to disappear. And I can use that vertex form to help me solve my equation and I or solve my problem. And I was correct. The maximum height of the ball is 3.225 meters. Part B, what's the horizontal distance of the ball when it reaches its maximum height? So again, the maximum height is, is, is important, right? That tells me I'm looking for the distance when it reaches its maximum, which tells me to use this equation here, my vertex form equation. But I'm not looking for this maximum anymore. I'm looking for the distance from the player. And again, I've now figured out what to use. I've chosen my tool. I don't think it's standard form, so let's just see what happens here. I do think I'm using my vertex form, and I was correct. And I can then use that equation, and I know that the ball is 17.5 meters away from the player. Uh, part C asks me for the height of the ball when it leaves the player's hand. That's really, really important. The when it leaves the player's hand is critical. It tells us when, just as it goes. So the ball's still in the player's hand in that split second when it leaves. That's really standard form, isn't it? Because the initial value is what I'm looking for. An initial value is really my y-intercept, which occurs when the independent variable is zero. So I want my standard form equation and I'm looking for the c-value. And in this situation, the c-value is just this 2 right here. So when the ball leaves the player's hand, it's 2 meters above the ground. And for tomorrow, I'd like you to finish exercise 5, page 12, number 3 and 4.